Yes, it's Tales from the Jails with uh, John G. Sutton. Do please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching this channel, but it helps if you like and subscribe, you know. Gets it out there. Anyway, today I want to talk again about the brutality in strange ways. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that uh, I'm personally responsible for this kind of uh, carry-on. Believe me, I did something to try and stop it. I actually took action. I tried to form a trade union to represent the basic grade prison officers and repair the problem that was already there because the government, the government had instituted the Prison Officers Association as a staff representation and it was run by the management for the management and the management wanted they must have wanted brutality because that's what they were getting and i did make an attempt to stop this i if you can see this it's uh, very briefly documented in the bbc tv series strange ways which was filmed in 1979 and screened in 1980. Just look on YouTube, you'll see. Uh, type in Strange Ways, BBC, 1980, and uh, the series will come up. And you can see in Series 3, uh, Screws, titled Screws, and uh, I'm in there actually making a real attempt, which was eventually to cost me my career in the prison system because they decided that uh, as I wasn't complying to their regulations and I did I did make an attempt you know I mean how many others did I mean people did I had a great deal of following across the country I actually went round to various other prisons giving talks on why we should not allow ourselves to treat people like dogs because eventually we will get bitten. And that's exactly what happened at Strange Ways in April 1990 when they ripped it to bits. I mean, you can only push people so far. So what was the system? I mean, people always saying about the blog. Well, the, the blog was the... Um, supposedly the ultimate answer but believe me if the block didn't work then the hospital padded cells most certainly did i saw numerous inmates who thought they were tough guys who put up a bit of a battle on the block and uh, the doctors uh, who attended decided that they needed to be sedated and so they got the old liquid kosh. People say you were just following orders, which, if you work in there, you didn't got much choice, you know. I mean, it wasn't as if I was uh, injuring people. What I was doing was calming them down and preventing themselves, preventing the inmates from harming themselves or other people. And very often they were attempting to harm the staff. And that, you, you mean, people aren't going in there working because they want to entertain themselves. People are going in there working because it's a day-to-day -day job. And at the time, in, in, in the 70s, it was a reasonable career. There were numerous opportunities. You could be a, an engineer in, in, in the works department. You could be a dog handler. You could be... A, a hospital officer, as I was. You could be working on the discipline side, which is on the landings, locking them up, counting them, putting them away. Various opportunities that existed. I mean, you could be in charge of the, the dock at uh, the Old Bailey, as I was for a period uh, in, in, in uh, London when I worked at Wormwood Scrubs. So these things you could do, but you can't now. What they've turned the job into is what I said. I mean, have a look at that documentary from 1979. I was saying, what's going to happen here is they're going to turn this job so that all we're doing is locking people in. We're just going to become 
turnkeys. And if we continue to do what we're doing without taking any action, this job is effectively finished, and it was. And to a certain extent it is. It's unrecognisable from the days when I was in. But the system, as I was saying, about brutality down the block, it wasn't something that people went looking for, but the nature of the prisoners who were going down there were quite clearly that they were, they were trouble on the landings, fighting on the landings, attacking staff, attacking uh, other prisoners. They're doing it today. But today they have seemingly no, no effective answer. I mean, at one prison, I believe it was HMP Wandsworth, they had 30 alarm calls in one day. 30. I mean, in strange ways, it was maybe two or three a week. That, that, that's the God's honest truth, that. I mean, but the thing was, the big difference was, that strange ways, if there was an alarm bell and there was trouble kicking off, then the trouble was stopped in its tracks and the perpetrators were uplifted off the floor, carried shoulder high and run through the prison down to D1 landing, which was the block, flung inside there into a cell and had the claws ripped off them. It might seem a little bit inhumane, but it kind of worked at the time. People were not volunteering for that, you know. And they knew if they kicked off on the landings, that is what they were going to get. Ask the people. Now listen, if there's anybody in there who experienced strange ways in the 70s, 80s, before the riot, you've got comments about the disciplinary system and how the block worked, post them down here. Please leave your comments. I, uh, there are people who have been posting on here to say that they recall when they saw me on the landings. It's a long time ago, and people may remember me. That's good. I don't think that I was anything uh, diabolical. I certainly didn't intend to be, because I always believed that the people who were in prison are just people like me, with a little bit twist uh, for a twist of fate. That could be me. Really, it could. I mean, for a period of time before I joined the prison service... I worked as a doorman in a big nightclub in Manchester. And the numerous times that you had drunks attacking you, and what do you think happened to them? We used to dump them in a back alley. <laughs> yes, I know I shouldn't be laughing. It's violence and it shouldn't be condoned. But if you go, you go into a nightclub and tattle the bouncers, what do you expect? Anyway, the system at Strange Ways was violent. It was condoned by the governor, Norman Brown, who well, well knew what was happening. It wasn't all the staff who were like that, believe me, but there were a, a niche group that actually were what I'd considered to be extremely violent people. And uh, they were the answer to any problems that presented in the prison. Nowadays, we've got the hostess brigade. What are they going to do? Kiss me, honey, honey, kiss me. That kind of crap. Anyway, there you are. I'm not totally innocent, but I was not deliberately out there to en entertain myself at the painful discretion of the poor inmates. And I did attempt to do something about it. So those of you that are criticising me, great! Comments down below. And if you've experienced violence in the prisons, tell me about it. I'm going to sing your song now. So I'm going to have the song dinger here. The famous song dinger. Run for the hills. This is a song called Autumn Leaves. It's performed by Nat King Cole, I believe. Here we go. I'm no Nat King Cole, as you probably agree. And thank you for those who have commented on my beautiful singing voice, saying I should be in the cat's choir. The cats would complain. The falling leaves... 
drift by the window, the autumn leaves of red and gold. I see your lips, the summer kisses, the sunburned hands I used to hold. Since you went away, the days grow long. And soon I'll hear old winter song, but I miss you most of all, my darling. When autumn leaves start to fall, the falling leaves they drift by my window. The autumn leaves of red and gold. I see your lips, oh, those summer kisses, the sunburned hands I used to hold. Since you went away, the days grow long, and soon I'll hear. Old winter song, but I miss you most of all, my darling. When autumn leaves start to fall, there you go. Autumn leaves, and it's autumn now. The leaves are falling outside. Thank you very much. Tales from the jails. Like and subscribe. Comments down below, and don't forget. Have a look at me book.